It's safe to say the Kansas State Legislature has taken up the lion's share of the headlines in Topeka so far this year. They left behind a lot of unfinished business when they went on break, which ends tomorrow. During their time off, Governor Laura Kelly's been soaking up the spotlight and she's been keeping busy, batting down a number of items the legislature did wind up passing, including a conservative Republican push to ban transgender athletes from competing in girls and women's sports. She also shot down the so-called Parents' Bill of Rights measure, a bill designed to make it easier for parents to try to remove learning items from classrooms and school libraries. And the list goes on. She signed many bills into law as well. There's a lot to consider for the legislature as lawmakers get back to work. Without further ado, let's bring in our roundtable of journalists. Please welcome to the program Sherman Smith, editor-in-chief of the Kansas Reflector and KMBC 9 political reporter Michael Mahoney. All right, gentlemen, thanks for being here. Uh, Sherman, the governor's making waves right now. Well, she is. She's signed a lot of bills, including some that uh, some of the, the Democrats wish she hadn't, and she's vetoed some of the, the things that Republicans had high on their wish list, uh, including, he's mentioned, the, the Parental Bill of Rights and the, the ban on transgender athletes. Uh, we'll have to see how many of these bills Republicans can attempt to uh, override. Uh, the, the ones that she vetoed did not pass with a two-thirds majority support. And Mahoney, as we get into the thick of campaign season, uh, how's this relationship between the governor and Republicans going to work? Uh, does she get her food tax cut? I mean, she did agree to sign that ban on sanctuary cities earlier this month. I'm not sure she's going to get her uh, uh, elimination of the uh, food uh, sales tax. She's going to continue to press during the uh, during the veto session, the 10 days or so left. But the Republicans have an alternative plan where it would be phased out over a period of time. And the food tax, depending on how it shapes out by the end of the session here in a few days, will be a big campaign issue in uh, in the fall. For sure. Uh, Sherman, of course, the, the governor earlier uh, this past week signed the state budget uh, into law with just a couple of line item vetoes. What has your eye as the legislature reconvenes here? There's a lot they didn't really do in the first mm -hmm. half of the session. Yeah, I think the food tax will be the, the big issue, but there's also the prospect of getting a, a medical marijuana bill over the line. Uh, they were they're very close on, on passing a sports gambling bill that they've been working on for years now, and they still need to pass a school funding bill. Mahoney, what are the biggest items you're watching? Uh, for, first off, the budget over in Missouri, uh, they've got about two weeks in order to uh, finish that. Uh, Governor Parson offered up about a $47 billion budget, the largest ever, um, and now the, the Senate is trying to add some elements to that, including for the first time in years, fully funding school transportation over in the House, there's talk now about some sort of taxpayer rebate, maybe $500 per person or 1000 for folks um, who are filing jointly. Those things are, are moving through, and they've, uh, they've, they've also got a marijuana legalization bill in Missouri, but I don't think, that, I don't think they've got the time enough to, to work that. They're, they finished their session up on May 13th, so they have a little bit more time. Not a lot. Right, that's a good point. Oh, Sherman, let's talk about uh, marijuana in Kansas. Is, does this likely actually happen with everything else that the legislature has to consider in Kansas this year? Well, I think it's a, a possibility, and I think that legislative leadership wants it to happen. You know, this passed the House a year ago. The Senate uh, had a committee hearing on a, a bill earlier this year, and so it's it's ready for the Senate to vote on. All of this is still up in the air, of course, but it, you know, the Senate bill especially is restrictive. You know, there, it, it wouldn't allow you to smoke marijuana, for instance. You, you would be limited to uh, edibles and, uh, you know, pills and, and that sort of thing. All right, Sherman, we know you also have a story out today in the Reflector about TEFI legislation in Kansas. Walk us through that. It's called a TEFI because nobody wants to say technology-enabled fiduciary <laughs> financial institution. Uh, which is a, a confusing name, but it what this story is really about is a, a Heston native uh, who built this uh, business down in, in Dallas that deals with alternative investments. He convinced the legislature last year to kind of carve out a special uh, uh, provision for him in state law that allows him to operate just kind of exclusively in a risky segment of the, the investment world uh, without being held to the same standards that a, a typical bank would. But I think there are some questions now about, you know, whether this money is really going to make it into rural development, how much of that money and how long it's going to take to get there. Um, some questions about his business enterprise raised through recent litigation and ongoing concerns that the banking commissioner has with the lack of regulations and the company's uh, inability to produce audited financial statements. Interesting. Okay, Mahoney, real quick, let's end with Missouri. Campaign finance reports around for the U.S. Senate race. What are you seeing? 
Uh, well, here, let's take a look at the cash on hand from all these candidates in this race right now. The amount of money that they're going to be able to spend over the next 12 weeks in this. On the top of the list is Senate President uh, Dave Schatz with over $2 million. Uh, but $2 million of that is his own money. Uh, running down the rest of the standings, if you will. Then it's Vicki Hartzler with a $1.5 million. Eric Schmidt with a $1.3 million. Eric Greitens with 345000 Billy Long with a quarter million dollars and Mark McCluskey with 118,000 and Lucas Kuntz over on the Democratic side outraised them all. And he's got almost a million dollars in cash in his campaign. Nothing yet from Trudy Bush Valentine, who just joined, joined the race. But that's the money they've got on hand going into the stretch drive of this race. All right. Money talks. We'll leave it there for this week. Sherman Smith, Michael Mahoney, thanks for your time.